ever pondered about the magic behind derived classes in programming? Welcome to the fascinating world of object-oriented programming, where derived classes, also known as child classes or subclasses, hold a special place. These classes have a unique ability. They can inherit attributes and behaviors from an existing class. This existing class, from which attributes and behaviors are borrowed, is known as the base class or parent class. Inheritance, this process of borrowing, is a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming. It allows us to create new classes based on existing ones, significantly promoting code reusability. Imagine not having to rewrite the same code over and over for similar objects. That's the power of inheritance. This mechanism creates a hierarchical relationship among classes, making our code more organized, readable, and manageable. So, as we dive deeper into the world of derived classes, remember this. Inheritance fosters code reusability and lays the groundwork for understanding derived classes. Derived classes, also known as child classes, are the heart of inheritance. These classes are like the offspring in a family tree of coding. They inherit attributes and behaviors from another class, which we call the base class or parent class. Just like children, derived classes can have the same features as their parents, but they can also have their own unique characteristics. In the world of object-oriented programming, derived classes play a pivotal role. They extend or specialize the functionality of the base class. This means they can do everything their parent class can do and then some more or they can choose to do something in a more specific way than their parent class. Let's consider an example. Imagine we have a base class called animal. This class may have attributes like name and age and behaviors like eat and sleep. Now we create a derived class from this base class and call it dog. This dog class inherits all the attributes and behaviors from the animal class. But being a specific type of animal, it can also have its own unique attributes like breed and behaviors like bark. What's more, the dog class can choose to do something in a more specific way than the animal class. For instance, while all animals eat, a dog might have a specific way of eating. So the dog class can override the eat behavior of the animal class to provide a more specific implementation. Derived classes are not just about adding new stuff or doing things differently. They play a crucial role in promoting code reuse. Instead of writing the same code again and again, we can simply let the derived classes inherit the common attributes and behaviors from the base class. This makes our code more efficient, easier to manage, and less prone to errors. Moreover, derived classes support the concept of inheritance, one of the fundamental principles of object-oriented programming. This principle allows us to create a hierarchical relationship among classes, just like a family tree. Derived classes help create hierarchical relationships among classes and promote code reusability. They facilitate the development of modular and extensible software systems, setting the stage for a more organized and efficient coding environment. How does a derived class access the members of a base class? Let's dive into the world of access control. In the realm of object-oriented programming, access control is the mechanism that governs the visibility and accessibility of class members. When a class is derived from a base class, it inherits the members of the base class. However, not all members are created equal. Some are readily accessible, while others are shrouded in layers of protection. This is where the concepts of public, protected, and private inheritance come into play. Public inheritance is like an open book. The public members of the base class remain public in the derived class, meaning that they can be accessed directly through the derived class. Protected members of the base class also remain protected in the derived class, which means they can be accessed only within the derived class and its subclasses. Protected inheritance, on the other hand, is a bit more guarded. In this case, both public and protected members of the base class become protected in the derived class. This means they can only be accessed within the derived class and its subclasses. It's like a secret handshake, only familiar to those within the circle of trust. Private inheritance is the most restricted form. Here, public and protected members of the base class become private in the derived class. This means they can only be accessed within the derived class itself. It's like a personal diary, accessible only to the owner. Now you might be asking, why all these levels of access control? The answer lies in the principle of encapsulation. Encapsulation allows us to hide the internal workings of a class and only expose what is necessary. 
By carefully controlling access to class members, we can ensure that the integrity of our data is maintained and that the class is used as intended. Remember, the type of inheritance determines the access control in derived classes. So choose wisely, and your code will thank you for it. Constructors and destructors play a pivotal role in derived classes. In the realm of object-oriented programming, constructors and destructors in derived classes are like the bookends of a class's life cycle. They ensure proper initialization of the class's objects at birth and proper cleanup when they cease to exist. Let's talk about constructors first. In a derived class, the constructor is a special member function that performs the initialization of the object. But here's the catch. The derived class constructor can call the base class constructor to initialize inherited members. This is done using the member initializer list in the derived class constructor. Imagine a derived class as a new floor added to an existing building, the base class. Before you can furnish this new floor, you need to ensure that the base building is structurally sound. That's what calling the base class constructor does. It's like a safety check that ensures the inherited parts of the derived class are correctly set up before the new parts are added. Now let's flip the coin and look at destructors. A destructor is another special member function, but its job is to clean up. It's automatically called when an object is about to be destroyed. In the case of derived classes, the derived class destructor is called first, followed by the base class destructor. Think of it as deconstructing the building. You would first clear out the new floor, the derived class, before bringing down the base building, the base class. This sequence ensures that the derived parts of the object are cleaned up before the base parts, maintaining the integrity of the object. So why are constructors and destructors in derived classes so crucial? They ensure that your program runs smoothly, without any hiccups. They make sure that when an object of a derived class is created, it's set up correctly, and when it's no longer needed, it's cleaned up properly, leaving no loose ends. In essence, constructors and destructors in derived classes are the custodians of your classes, ensuring proper initialization and cleanup. They are the silent heroes, working behind the scenes, making sure your programs run without a hitch. Constructors and destructors in derived classes ensure proper initialization and cleanup. Derived classes bring to the table the power of function overriding and polymorphism. As we delve deeper into the world of object-oriented programming, these concepts become incredibly relevant and powerful. First, let's talk about function overriding. This is when a derived class provides a new implementation for a function that is already defined in its base class. Essentially, the derived class is saying, thanks for the function base class, but I think I can handle this one on my own. This is done by declaring a function in the derived class with the same name, return type and parameters as the one in the base class. For instance, let's imagine a base class called animal with a function called make sound. This function could be overridden in a derived class like dog or cat, each providing their unique implementation of the make sound function. A dog might return woof while a cat might return meow. Now let's move on to polymorphism. Derived from the Greek words poly, meaning many, and morph, meaning forms, polymorphism allows us to treat objects of different classes uniformly through a common interface. It's like having a box of assorted chocolates. While each chocolate is unique in its own way, they can all be enjoyed uniformly, as they are all, at the end of the day, chocolates. In the context of programming, consider a function that takes an animal object as a parameter. Thanks to polymorphism, we could pass in an object of any class derived from animal, such as dog or cat, and the function would work perfectly fine. The correct make sound function would be called depending on the actual type of the object, demonstrating polymorphism in action. In essence, function overriding in derived classes allows for this beautiful dance of polymorphism. It enables us to write more flexible and reusable code by providing a common interface among different classes. It's like having a universal remote control that can operate a TV, a stereo, and a DVD player, regardless of their make or model. Function overriding in derived classes enables polymorphism, allowing for a common interface among different classes. Derived classes are masters of specialization and extension. They are like chameleons, adapting and evolving to meet specific needs. With their ability to specialize, derived classes can tailor the functionality of the base class to provide a more specific behavior. Think of it as a chef taking a basic recipe and adding their unique touch to create a signature dish. But derived classes don't stop at specialization. 
They also excel at extension. They can add new members or methods to the base class, extending its functionality. It's like an architect taking a basic building blueprint and adding new rooms or features to create a more functional and exciting structure. In both cases, derived classes maintain the fundamental essence of the base class, while enhancing it with specialized and extended functionalities. This makes them a powerful tool in object-oriented programming. Derived classes, through specialization and extension, provide a robust mechanism for developing modular and extensible software systems.